Um, next one I want to have a chat with is uh, a fan favorite, Sean O'Malley, fighting against uh, Lewis Smolka. A um, little bit of an interesting matchup, both being unranked. Uh, Lewis Smolka on a one-fight win streak. Uh, Sean O'Malley, I believe he's on a one-fight win streak as well. Um, Bouncing back after his loss to um, Marlon Vera, um, beating Thomas Almeida. I mean, it was essentially a double knockout. Um, A very, very impressive win coming in March this this year. And uh, Smolka's, you know, he's underrated as well. You know, his last win coming in, um, I think, December last year. So... It's going to be an interesting matchup. His last fight, um, he won by uh, a guillotine choke. Sorry, no, he he lost to a guillotine choke by against Casey Kenny, another rising star in the bantamweight division. Um, and and his last fight, uh, he won by TKO via punches. Um, it, it it seems to me, um, in his last four fights, he's won two of them, and those two losses uh, came to unranked opponents, which were submissions by a variation of chokes, so either guillotine choke or triangle choke. And we know that uh, Sean O'Malley's a proficient purple belt. Um, I'm not sure if he's on his brown belt yet. Um, he's either on his purple or brown belt, and he's very good on the ground, and he's got very good distance control and speed on the feet. So it is an interesting matchup. I think a lot of people are expecting Sean to blow Smolka out of the water. What do you think? He, well, the thing is about Smolka is that people kind of sleep on him is because he's been in the UFC. He's been competing in the UFC since 2000. He's been a professional fighter since 2010. He's been competing in the UFC since 2014. You know, he um, is just not a super frequent fighter. He usually has, well, I mean, he has two three fights, usually a year, sorry, a year. Uh, but one thing I like about him a lot is that he's the kind of guy that doesn't like to leave it up to the judges. He stated that openly in recent interviews because a lot of, some of his losses usually come through uh, decision. And if we go back and look at some of them, there's interviews where he believed that he didn't win. Uh, so he won the fight. Uh, so he's known for putting guys away in knockout or submitting on the ground which makes him a pretty good and he's very seasoned as well. So which makes him a better um, fighter against someone like Sean O'Malley, who is up and coming and sort of now on a resurgence after, oh, help me out here, Jack. Sorry, who, who did he be recently? I, I can't remember his name real quick. Um, I, I'm very, very terrible at these types of names. Um, uh, Jose Alberto. Um, uh, Quinones? Yeah, that's it. That's the last guy who fought Thomas, Thomas Alamey. Yeah, yeah. And he, after losing to Marlon Vera previously before that, so now that he's come back, obviously everyone's got all eyes on O'Malley because, you know, he was the darling of the Dana White Contender Series. So and people want to, he's sort of being groomed right now into becoming a uh, future champion. Oh, sorry. Were you talking about Were you talking about Smolka? Or were you talking about Sean O'Malley? The when you asked for the the name of the the win he had. Uh, 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 O'Malley. Oh, O'Malley. Sorry, no, no. Yeah, I remember the knockout against uh, Eric Weinland before he was uh, beaten by um, Marlon Chido Vera. Um, Sean O'Malley beat Eric Weinland um, with another walk off KO that he was trying to replicate later on. Um, against Thomas Almeida, ended up just having to do it twice in order to solidify it. I, I was talking about um, Smoker's last fight, um, and that, that was back in 2020 against Jose. Um, another thing I want to bring up is, you know, it, technically, uh, Smoker should be considered underrated at this point because he has a a very long resume in the UFC. Um, there, there was this, uh, he had a bit of a stick in the UFC, but uh, in pretty much a one year long stick, actually from 2016 to 2017. Um, he was on a four fight losing streak. Um, two of which are from, you know, very familiar names that we know Ray Borg uh, losing by decision. And then we've got um, uh, the current bantamweight uh, champion, uh, Brandon Moreno, who uh, submitted him by guillotine choke. So it, it seems like, Smolka has a one-up in terms of experience over Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley is only 26 years old. So um, Smolka's definitely 
uh, considered a veteran at this point with the amount of uh, people that he's fought in the UFC. And I think that a little bit more respect should be given to that. Now, um, also based that he's, you know, he's fought Ray Borg and Brandon Moreno, um, who are some big names in the bantamweight division, as well as Casey Kenny, of course, who uh, Casey Kenny uh, did very well against uh, Dominic Cruz, but it just uh, came up short. So, look, he's fought some really good fighters. Um, I just, I just think that he's he's not evolving at the rate that Sean is, and I don't think he's got the the skills that Sean O'Malley has on the feet. And I think Sean could even. Uh, poke a few holes in uh, in Smoker's game because it seems like a common way for Smoker to actually uh, to lose in past fights is to be choked out either by guillotine or triangle. So look, look, Sean, Sean has the tools to beat Smoker and I, I really think that that's a possibility here. Um, I, I think Sean will most likely knock out Smoker um, and I think it would be by a second round KO. Mm. I was going to say, yeah, I agree. I reckon small. I could. I reckon it would be a second round KO, or it would be a second round submission. Yeah, I do understand that. Cause he's able to um, most likely um, thread him with the submission, and perhaps that could, um, you know, then flow into uh, a, a knockout, or vice versa. You know, he could be try. He could be thinking very much about the hands. Sean takes him down. They have a scramble. He quickly goes for. A, I mean, maybe Smoker goes and dies for a, a takedown. Um, and, and Sean goes straight into a guillotine, you know, or perhaps he gets pulled into a full guard and he goes straight into a triangle choke and then submits Smolka from there. So I think the main thing that we're trying to bring up is Sean has all the tools to beat Smolka. It's just whether or not he will finish him. And I just think Sean will. I think he will. Understood. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that one. I mean, the thing is though, Sean, I believe if he beats Smolka, he should have a ranked opponent. I think so. That that's a good point. That that's got to be going down because we had that argument. We well, he's back now. He was better than ever against Thomas Media. He learned a lot from Marlon Vera. You know, he was a high train. He suffered his first loss, and it was important to take that loss. And then he used it to his advantage. And not even that, but also Sean is a heavily beloved fighter by the uh, U- UFC community and also that by the mainstream community as well. I mean, the, the guy hangs out with Jake Paul and Logan Paul for Christ's sakes. And, you know, he's hanging out with all these rappers and he's not even in the top 10 in his division. And he's already got that kind of star power. The thing when you have that start much star power, you've got to have the skills and the credentials to back it up. And I feel like if he beats Smoker and he goes into the top 10, he now finally has that experience to back it up. You know what I mean? Mm. 